Hey everybody, this is Pete. And in this video, I want to answer a question that came into the tech support line where a customer was having trouble constraining some angled flanges to a bar. So they were gracious enough to let me use their model. So this is exactly the setup. And what they wanted to do is they wanted to have these angled flanges 90 degrees from this face to this face. And they also wanted these points here, the nearest points to be seven and a quarter inches away from each other. And all of that to be symmetric about the center of the bar, which happens to be you know, the XY plane of the origin, which was super helpful. So I'm gonna dive in and share some techniques with you on how to constrain a part like this and, and get it to cooperate. So uh, to start out with, I've knocked out a couple of parameters, the desired spacing, and the desired angle between them. That way, if you need to make some changes later, you know, you obviously could do that. And so we'll start off with the easy stuff. So I'm gonna launch the constraint command. And what we wanna do is we're just simply going to constrain the edges that are touching the bar to the appropriate surface. So I hit that and I made that. I'm gonna do the same thing on the back side. Find this edge, made it to that guy. So easy peasy, we'll do that on the other side as well. Till we get it. So what happened is uh, we got that set up. Now we're gonna get a little bit more complex. And this is where it starts to get a little bit fiddly, but I'm going to now constrain from this origin plane to this point. So if you just hover on or near that point for just a moment or two, you should get select other cycling to show up. And that's some timing stuff that you can play with. And I'll pick the vertex, but of course I don't want it to touch. That's where I'll grab that parameter, desired spacing, and then I don't want it to be the full seven and a quarter, but I divide it by two. So what you see happen though, this is where it gets interesting, is it kind of played with the orientation of my part. That's okay because we'll fix it in a second. But again, this is where it'll take a little bit of adjustment you may not normally have to do. So I hit apply and we'll do the same thing for the other side. This time, if you right click on it near that point, you can do select other yourself. If you don't see that little menu come up on its own and then you pick the object you want, which in this case is that vertex. Same thing, I wanna do the des desired spacing divided by two, but it pushes it to the wrong side. So I do have to say, oops, negative to keep things on the correct side. So I hit okay. And again, it's kind of messed with the orientation of the bracket. So what I need to do is I need to use the free rotate tool to get things organized. Now I very rarely find use for free move and free rotate, but there are occasions like this where they can be very useful. So if you right click in the marking menu, you should see it at the eight o'clock position but because I use it so infrequently, um, yeah, I've remapped that. So you can always come up to the ribbon, grab free rotate, pick on the component, and then you just kind of play with the orientation. Doesn't have to be perfect. You just get it close because as soon as you drag it, it kind of fixes itself. So do the same thing again. Rotate this thing up like so. Maybe come up just a touch. I think that's pretty good. And there we have it. So <clears throat> that's the idea of kind of getting the table set. We've got the component located where we want it. Now we have to control the orientation. So what you need to do is you need to set up a couple different constraints, an angular constraint, obviously between the two, but then you also want it to be symmetric about the XY plane. So you can do it in either order. Uh, you could do the angle between them, and then this is going to screw up the orientation again. You have to fiddle around with free move or free rotate, sorry, until you get it back. So I'm going to show you the symmetric constraint first because I think it it will be easier to apply, but it's going to throw a confusing error, and I'll show you how to work around that. So I actually did show the customer how to do the angle first and then be all fiddly with it, <laughs> but I'm going to try something a little bit different for this video. So we're gonna apply the symmetry constraint. 
Again, not a constraint I use super often, but this is a great, great place for it. So I'm going to say I want this surface to be symmetric to this surface. And then your third selection is about which plane. Well, it's going to be the XY plane again. So when we get that, now this is symmetric about that plane. We can hit apply. And now we want to set up the angle. So now I'm going to use an undirected angle. I just basically want the angle between these two surfaces to be that desired angle. So I go ahead and hit apply and oh, it worked. Sometimes that throws an error. I think it's because I had it pretty close. If it ever does throw an error, what you can do is you can suppress the constraint that it's fighting with, which would be the symmetry. And just like features in a model, you could rearrange these a little bit. And if, if that helps, you could push it below the angle, sort of like, hey, I pretended I applied the angle first, and then you can unsuppress this. So if you ever run into that, you can kind of play with those options. But there is that bracket now at 90 degrees, spaced out seven and a quarter, and symmetric about that plane. So a little bit fiddly sometimes, but you can create these complex relationships even at some freaky angles. So I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know and have a blessed day.